I'm Daniel Vesotis, and today we're diving into one of the busiest topics in technology, decentralized finance, or DeFi. Now, before you imagine me handing out free crypto tokens like Oprah, you get a coin, you get a coin, let me pause with an important disclaimer. This video is for educational purposes only. I do not offer financial advice or investment services. Any mention of blockchain, tokenization, or DeFi is purely informational and connected to innovation in real estate, hospitality, and technology. Translation, I'm here to teach, not to sell you magic beans. So what's DeFi all about? Imagine walking into a bank and being greeted not by a teller, but by nothing. No grumpy face behind the glass, no paperwork the size of Warren Beast piece, just your phone and a bit of code running on a blockchain. That's DeFi in a nutshell. Financial tools without the middleman. It's like the difference between ordering a pizza directly online versus calling that one pizzeria where they put you on hold for 15 minutes. DeFi just gets you the pizza faster and sometimes with extra toppings. At its core, DeFi stands for decentralized finance. Instead of institutions like banks or brokers approving your transactions, DeFi uses something called smart contracts. These are little programs that live on blockchains, basically self-driving agreements. You don't need to trust a person, you trust the code. If you're thinking, but Daniel, what if the code messes up? That's a fair point, but we'll get into the risks later. But first, let's stick to the fun part. Why is this such a big deal in 2025? Well, billions of people around the world either don't have bank accounts or don't trust their banking systems. DeFi says, forget the lines at the bank, forget the paperwork. Here's access to financial tools through your phone. It's borderless, 24 seven, and doesn't close on weekends or holidays. The only thing it can do is give you free lollipops like old school side bankers. Take lending for example. Traditionally, you put your money in a bank and they toss you a bit of uh, interest while they turn around and lend you money out at much higher rates. Banks are like that friend who borrows 20 bucks and then charges you interest when they pay you back. In DeFi, platforms like Aave or Compound let you lend directly to others with a smart contract doing all the heavy lifting. The result, you make more of a return minus the friend who owes you drama. Next up, decentralized exchanges or DEXs. Think of them like digital farmer, farmer's market where people swap tokens instead of vegetables. No central authority, no single cashier. You just connect your wallet Pick what you want and trade. It's peer-to-peer, -peer, transparent, and surprisingly fun. And unlike your local farmer's market, nobody's trying to upsell you kale. What if this even more exciting is how DeFi spills into real estate and hospitality, the industries I've lived and breathed for over 40 years. We're now seeking tokenized real estate Properties broken down into digital tokens. Imagine a luxury villa in Mykonos split into thousands of digital shares. You don't need to buy the whole villa. You could hold a fraction of it. Like owning one slice of pizza instead of the whole pie. Of course, once again, let me emphasize this is just an example of how technology is evolving. I'm not telling you to go out and buy pizza tokens or villa shares. This is about understanding how innovation works not handling our financial recommendations. And here's where my hospitality brain kicks in. Imagine booking a villa for a hotel through a decentralized platform where the smart contracts handles your reservation instantly. No third party fees, no mysterious service charges that show up at checkout, just a clean transaction. Guests might even learn earn loyalty tokens that could be used across different properties worldwide sort of like frequent flyer miles, but without the blackout dates. That's the direction technology could take hospitality in the future. But let's rewind a bit and talk about the building blocks of DeFi. First, there's blockchain. Think of it like a giant Google Doc where everybody can see, but nobody can erase or tamper with it. Every transaction is logged permanently, making it transparent and secure. 
On top of these blockchains, you have dApps, decentralized applications, that do everything from swapping tokens to lending funds. Ethereum was the original playground for these apps, but now we've got Solana, Avalanche, and others racing to make trans transactions cheaper and faster. Smart contracts, those self-executing codes, are the real MFPs here. Imagine if your, your vending machine was, uh, was a lawyer, a banker, an accountant, all rolled into one. You put in your input, say some crypto, and the smart contract automatically executes the agreement. If, if Daniel's deposit A then happens, no human approval is needed. It's like trust on autopilot. Let's highlight some key DeFi features, and I'll make it fun. Accessibility. Got Wi-Fi and a wallet? You're in. Doesn't matter if you're in Chicago or Santorini, Greece. Transparency. Everything on the blockchain is like having receipts for your receipts. Control. Money stays in your digital wallet. No one freezes it. No one takes a cut without you knowing. Innovation. New features pop up faster than coffee shops in Brooklyn. Yield farming. Flash loans. Staking. Half the time and the name sounds like extreme sports. Speaking of yield farming, here's a quick version. You deposit your crypto into something called a liquidity pool, which powers exchanges and other platforms. In return, you earn rewards. Some people call it making your money work for you. I call it putting crypto on the treadmill. The returns can be attractive, but don't forget treadmills also come with risks of falling flat on your face. That's why it's important to stay cautious. Now let's balance the excitement with the risks because there are plenty. Bugs and spark contracts are real. Billions have been lost over the years because of vulnerabilities in the code. Then there's scams, fake projects that look shiny but end up being rug pulls, where creators vanish with the funds. It's like that one friend who always says, trust me, this time is different, <laughs> right before it isn't. And of course, crypto pieces can swing like a roller coaster. That's why stable coins exist, pegged to assets like the dollar to keep things steady. But even those need careful handling. So how do you even start exploring this world? Step one, you always need a wallet like MetaMask. It's basically your digital backpack for interacting with DeFi apps. Step two, you need crypto, usually Ethereum or stable coins. Step three, Connect your wallet to a DeFi platform and you're good to go. But here's my friendly tip. Start small. If you wouldn't spend it on a night out, maybe you don't put it in an experimental DeFi app either. That way you'll learn without losing sleep. Now let's talk about where DeFi is headed in 2025. We're already seeing regulators start to get involved and this is going to shape the future. Some people think regulation will kill the spirit of DeFi. I think the reality is somewhere in the middle. Rules could make the space safer, which might bring more people in. After all, no one wants to join a game where the referee is missing and the players keep tackling the audience. So we're also seeing connections to artificial intelligence. Imagine AI-powered bots that automatically optimize your trades or manage your staking rewards. It's like having a financial assistant who doesn't take a lunch, who doesn't take lunch breaks. Uh, Cross-chain bridges are another trend, making it possible to move assets between different blockchains easily. That's like being able to use your subway card in every city in the world. So why does all of this matter? Because whether you're interested in finance or not, these innovations are reshaping industries, real estate, hospitality, payments. They're all being touched by blockchain and DeFi. Even if you've never used a DeFi app yourself. The ripple effects could influence how you buy property, how you book vacations, or even how you send money across borders. And here's my favorite part. You don't need to be a tech genius to understand the basics. Once you strip away the jargon, DeFi is just about connecting people directly using code to make the process fairer, faster, and more efficient. So to wrap up, here's the big takeaway. DeFi is exciting, but it's not magic. It's a set of tools that 
that could make financial services more inclusive. It's not about quick riches or overnight Lambos. It's about creating systems that work for more people, not just the privileged few. And finally, let me say this one more time. This video is not is for educational purposes only. I'm not here to give financial advice. I'm here to help you understand the technology, the potential and the risks so you can stay informed. Thanks for joining me on this journey. If you have if you've had fun learning, let me know in the comments what part of D5 you found most surprising or maybe an analogy you like best. Was it the pizza, the treadmill, the referee who watched uh, wandered off the field? I'd love to hear your thoughts. I'm Daniel Vesotis. I'm I'll I'll see you in the next one. We're here to keep exploring the future of hospitality, real estate, blockchain, tokenization. Until then, stay curious, stay informed. And if you're venturing into DeFi, double check those URLs because the only rug you want in your life is the one in your living room.